Hello, my name is Mary Beth Leatherdale and I am the author of Terry Fox and Me. I worked with Milan Pavlovich on the book. He made these beautiful illustrations and it was a real joy for me to work with Doug Allworld and the Fox family in developing this book. It's an incredible story and I'm really thrilled to be able to share it with you. So let's start reading. Every friendship starts somewhere. Ours begins at the Mary Hill Cobras basketball tryouts in a small city in British Columbia where two rivers meet and become one. The coach blows his whistle and the drills begin. The, kids in the, yellow sh the kid in the yellow shirt is the only one shorter than me. What if I'm the worst player? I dribble, I pass, I shoot baskets, I block shots. I make the first string. The short kid is the worst player. His name is Terry Fox. The coach says wrestling might be a better sport for him, but if Terry comes to practice, the coach won't cut him from the team. I shouldn't be glad that I'm better than Terry, but I am. The next day, the phone rings. It's Terry. Hi, Doug. Want to play some one-on-one? -on -one? I need to work on my game. No, nah, I can't. I'm busy, I say. I'm not really busy. I just don't want to play with the worst kid on the team. A week later, Terry's still calling. This guy won't give up, and I like to win, so I say yes. School ends, but all summer long, Terry and I practice. Terry learns to keep his head up, stay low, step back, fake. Terry's not so bad. He's funny, he likes science. Best of all, he loves basketball too. Even though I beat him every game, he never complains. By the time school starts, Terry is good enough to be on the roster, one of the 12 best players on the team. And I have a new best friend. Before long, we're in high school. Terry grows taller than me. Now when we play one-on-one, -on -one, he beats me 21-0. I don't mind losing to Terry though. Well, only a little. Terry and I don't hang out much anymore. He's busy with his new basketball teammates, going to parties and hanging out with friends. I'm busy too, training for the biggest cross-country race of my life, the provincial championships. Cross country is the one sport Terry doesn't like. Maybe it's because he's always far behind me. The night before the championship, my mind is spinning. What if I start too fast and lose steam by the end or I hang back too long? What if, I, if I'm the slowest runner? Bring, bring. The phone startles me. It's Terry. Good luck tomorrow, he says. Just do your best, Doug, one step at a time. All through the race, Terry's voice echoes in my head. I win the second place medal. When university starts, Terry and I drive to the campus in his old beat up car. Over the rattle of the muffler, he tells me his knee is hurting, probably from basketball practice on the hard gym floor. He doesn't want the coach to know. But a few weeks later, Terry can barely walk, so he goes to the hospital. When I visit Terry the next day, I see tears rolling down his face. He has a rare type of cancer. They're going to amputate his leg. Terry is the best athlete that I know. What can he do with only one leg? But Terry says not to feel sorry for him. Losing his leg is just a new challenge. After his operation, he shows me a magazine article about a guy with one leg who ran the New York City Marathon. Maybe I'll run across Canada, he says. I believe him. Terry stays in the hospital while he learns to walk on his prosthesis. He looks like the bionic man, all fiberglass and steel where the rest of his leg used to be. At first, Terry practices walking with two crutches, then one, then just a cane. One day when I'm bringing him some schoolwork, he meets me at the elevator, empty hands raised in victory. How'd you walk here, I ask. One step at a time, he says with a grin. The months speed by with treatments at the 
cancer clinic. As soon as Terry is finished with the treatments, he starts weight training to build his strength. Playing wheelchair basketball helps too. Sometimes we race up the pine tree covered mountain, Terry in his wheelchair and me on foot. I always give him a head start. He says hearing my footsteps behind him makes him push harder. Seeing Terry in front of me makes me push harder too. Terry tells me a secret. He wants to run across Canada to raise money for cancer research. Will you help me train? I tell him to start slow, run a little farther each day, give his body time to recover. In a year or two, he'll be ready. But it's not just Terry's body that has to adapt to running. His artificial leg does too. Terry and his prosthetist, a person who makes artificial limbs, gets to work. They start with a regular artificial leg for walking, fiberglass bus bucket, metal shaft, springs, gears, foot made of wood and rubber. They add special parts for running, steel hinge for the knee, belt to attach the leg, elastic strap to pull the leg forward. Still, the heavy artificial leg moves too slowly. So Terry adjusts his gait, two steps with his good leg, leg while his artificial leg swings forward. Even with the new leg, running is very painful for Terry, but that doesn't stop him. Terry runs at night under the warm glow of the stars. Some nights I run with him, some nights he runs by himself. Hop hop on his left leg, long step with his right. By the end of the summer, Terry is running eight kilometers a day. I ask him if he wants to enter a race with me. When he tells me to enter him in the shorter distance, I push him. You run almost that far now. Why don't you run the longer distance? It will be a bigger challenge. For a few minutes, Terry doesn't say a word. Then he answers. Okay, Doug, I'll do it. The 28 kilometer race is grueling. The course is steep along a busy highway. I finish eighth, one of my best times. Terry comes in last, grinning from ear to ear. The crowd cheers. That's my best friend, I shout. If it's the truth, it's not really bragging. We begin planning for Terry's cross country run. We'll start in St. John's, Newfoundland next spring. To make it back to British Columbia before winter, Terry will have to run a marathon every day, 200 marathons in a row. No one else in the world has ever run that far on one leg. Terry trains even harder. Every day he runs. He never thinks about how far he has to go. He just takes one step at a time to the corner, to the stop sign, to the tree. Nothing will stop him from running, not the flu, not blisters, not his leg bleeding. When I try to convince him to take a day off to rest his injuries, he gets mad. We argue, he keeps running. A few months before the run, I start to have second thoughts. I'm supposed to drive the van, get Terry food and water, keep track of how far he runs each day, talk to reporters and collect money. How will I do all of that? I can't talk to reporters. I don't know what to do if Terry gets hurt. Again and again, I ask Terry to find someone else to go with him. Soon, Terry loses his patience with me. He stomps toward me. You're my best friend. You have to go with me. Remember, take it one step at a time. Terry looks so different now, strong and powerful. If Terry can do this, I can do this. When spring arrives, Terry's ready, so am I. We pick up the brand new camper van that will be our home for the next five months. It has everything we need, fridge, stove, stereo, beds, stinky chemical toilet. We load the cupboards with all of Terry's favorite foods, cereal, oranges, chocolate chip cookies, canned spaghetti, baked beans, peanut butter and jelly. We gather all of Terry's running gear, eight pairs of running shoes, five white t-shirts, four pairs of gray socks, three artificial legs, one lucky sock. Our great adventure begins in a large city in Newfoundland where the 
island coastland meets the strong rolling tides. Side by side, we stand on the rocky shore. Terry dips his artificial leg into the swirling water. He turns to look up at the steep hill ahead. Just do your best, Terry, I smile, one step at a time. Then he starts to run. Thanks so much for letting me share this reading with you. You can see there's notes from Daryl Fox, Terry's brother at the back of the book, as well as information from Doug Aldward, where he talks about Terry and uh, his training for the Marathon of Hope. If you're looking for more information and uh, question ideas and activity ideas, please check out the educator's guide for Terry Fox and me that I created and it's available on, um, from Tundra. The Terry Fox Foundation also has all kinds of wonderful resources. So uh, look there as well. So it's been great spending uh, a few minutes with you. So thank you very much. Have a great day and remember, Anything is possible if you try.